What's better, Nvidia or AMD? Well, what if I told you that question literally does not matter? Sure, it's the biggest debate in PC building history, but you don't have to pick between the two anymore because we're gonna put both Nvidia and AMD GPUs in one PC but it's not as simple as I make it sound. You see, every website and YouTuber says that you cannot pair two GPUs from different vendors because it can lead to instability, crashes, blue screens, nothing too crazy. At least it doesn't say, can lead to having no bitches. Wait a second. But if you keep reading, they say that it clearly works. So then why does nobody combine AMD and Nvidia graphics cards if the only problem is that you're gonna get more FPS? Well, dual GPU gaming is actually nothing new. Back in the 2010s, you could use two cards from the same brand using NVIDIA SLI or AMD Crossfire, but the issue is that there was never a way for AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards to work together, which makes no sense in 2024 because the only reason for combining two GPUs today is to get NVIDIA's DLSS and ray tracing while also getting AMD's pure gaming performance. So today, I'm gonna combine NVIDIA and AMD to build the ultimate dual GPU computer. These are the two GPUs we're gonna pair today. AMD's fastest GPU of 2020, the RX 6900 XT, which consistently performs like a 3090 for less than half the price. It is seriously a powerhouse for 1440p ultra gaming if you're on a budget of $900 to $1100. And on the Nvidia side, we have arguably the greatest, most respected GPU of all time, the GTX 1080 Ti. And you're probably thinking, why would you use a 7-year-old graphics card? A 2017 GPU doesn't have any of the NVIDIA DLSS or ray tracing features, so why would I choose this graphics card when there are 39 RTX graphics cards that I could have picked instead? Well, the one-word reason for why I chose the 1080 Ti over a $4,000 graphics card is optimization. And I know that makes no sense to you right now, but after this 15 second explanation, you're gonna want to replace your own GPU with one of these too. The GTX 10 series wasn't just iconic, but they are the most optimized GPUs for DirectX 11 of all time, even getting more consistent FPS than the RTX 4090 in Fortnite performance mode. And with the driver updates that the GTX 10 series still gets, even after 8 years, this is exactly why so many people still use the GTX 1080 Ti to this day. But you might be thinking 0.57% is not a lot of people, but remember that Steam has over 130 million active users every month, which means that there are over 700,000 people using the 7-year-old graphics card in 2024. And for just $160, it's really just an absolute monster. And the best part is that both combined only cost me $550, which is still cheaper than a 4070 Super, which the 6900 XT competes very closely with. So in terms of pure value, it's still more worth it to buy these two graphics cards instead of the 14070 Super. And with two GPUs, we also need two monitors. You know what's better than one cookie? Two cookies, ah, monitors. So far, I've been talking about dual GPU gaming like it's the perfect solution for everything, but there's one problem that I've been hiding from you the entire time power consumption. The 6900 XT alone requires a minimum power supply of 850 watts, which probably doesn't sound like a lot, but that's also the same minimum power supply of the RTX 4090. Fortunately, I already have an 850 watt power supply, but wait, I'm forgetting something. I also have to power an entire other GPU, which means that I now need over a thousand watts of power to use both GPUs at the same time, which is nearly double of the recommended power for a 4070 Super. We're going to create an actual portable stove because the way active cooling works is that the GPU intakes cold air from the bottom of the case and exhausts the hot air out the top. I'm already cooked because I was too poor to afford fans at the bottom of my case, and now it's gonna be even worse because we have two GPUs forming a nuclear reactor in this metal box. There are Redditors shitting on people who don't leave enough airflow for one GPU, so imagine they see this monstrosity. If you didn't believe in global warming before this, well now you do. So to deal with all this added heat and power, we need to buy more fans. But you might remember that I am broke and the $5 fans that I bought are no longer for sale, and I would have to spend triple the money for some fans. And obviously, I didn't want to do that because it hurts to spend more money for something that you could have gotten for cheaper last month. So instead of losing 10 doubloons, let's just put the second GPU in the motherboard and see what happens. Only problem is that the top slot was the only one designed to have a GPU in it. You'll see the other three slots look kind of sad, and that's because they're slower Gen 3 slots for things like storage or Wi-Fi cards. It would still work, but it's just going to be limited to Gen 3 speeds. But somehow this is perfect because the 1080 Ti runs at full speed off a Gen 3 slot, which was totally unplanned for, I swear. But now I have to make a crucial decision and choose between the three positions. This was easily the most difficult GPU installation I've ever done, though. There is no space for your fingers, and it's impossible to see. And we did end up scratching the PCIe connector a bunch, which can ruin your GPU if you do it too much. Now that we have the power, space, and temperature issues out of the way, we should be good to go now, right? 
Nope, this is Electron video. You can't expect anything to work the first time. Initially, I wanted to try booting up my PC without the power connector in the 1080 Ti so I could see if my 6900 XT would work by itself, but the computer forces you to plug it in, so we're diving straight into dual GPU gaming with no protection. Dog. What is that noise? We're not even one second into the challenge. So to answer the first question of whether or not dual GPU gaming is possible, it is most definitely possible, but is it worth the money or time it takes to set up? Let's find out by testing a few different games, and I guarantee that the FPS we get from using two graphics cards will confuse you. On the left is how my 6900 XT performs by itself, and on the right is the 6900 XT with the 1080 Ti installed. To my surprise, we're getting more FPS in Tomb Raider 2013, the oldest AAA game that I own, even though the GTX 1080 Ti is barely even being used. Not entirely sure how we gained a few frames, but I'm glad to see that all that time researching was worth it. And I'm going to immediately take that back because in Rise of the Tomb Raider, we dropped FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider's FPS stays exactly the same, and Cyberpunk 2077 actually refuses to boot up and it shows an error message that I've never seen before. And to make things even worse, our average frame rate in Black Myth Wukong dropped from 79 to 78 FPS. So at this point, you would think that having two GPUs is a huge waste of money, but we have one more game to test. With both GPUs, this is the first time I've ever hit 1500 FPS in Fortnite, but this is an FPS map, so to make it a fair comparison, I went back to the 1v1 map, and it's still the same 1300 FPS that I'm used to getting. In fact, I was still getting over 1300 FPS with only the 1080 Ti and no second GPU. With almost everything going wrong in this video except for the Tomb Raider benchmark, you're probably wondering why I still have two graphics cards in my computer. It's causing games to crash, dropping my FPS, and running up my power bill. So why would I keep them both? Well, if you look at the CPU usage in all of these benchmarks, there's still a lot of room to do other things in the background. And having this NVIDIA graphics card to render videos as I'm playing games would be a genius move because one of the main reasons people buy NVIDIA over AMD is for their performance in everything outside of gaming. And this ended up working great because you can set certain apps to use one GPU or the other. But somehow connecting the monitor to the 1080 Ti is doing just about as well as Lunchly's marketing when paired with the 6900 XT, only getting around 500 FPS while looking at the sky instead of the usual 1300. But I didn't want to give up on the dual GPU dream just yet, so I tried everything to fix this problem. My first plan was to reinstall my drivers, but I had no luck with that. I then tried to disable my 6900 XT to see if the 1080 Ti can do anything by itself, but we are still stuck with less than half the FPS I was expecting. At this point, I was on the verge of giving up on this challenge because nothing seemed to work, but then something sparked in my brain. Last time I had a major issue that almost ruined a video, I was saved by a random guy on a random forum on the internet, so we're gonna try to repeat the same thing again. This Reddit poster says that your top PCIe slots get 16 dedicated lanes from your CPU, your other slots connect to the chipset and share the four lanes running to it. So this f***ing sucks. But the first step to finding a solution is to find the problem, and we know the exact problem so this should be the easiest thing to fix. If the only issue is that the GPU connects to the chipset instead of the CPU, then all I have to do is find a way to force my GPU to connect to my CPU, right? So again, I went on Google and searched for a solution, and came across a thread that explains everything I needed to know. According to this response, the only way you can get two GPUs to run at full speed is to get an SLI-capable motherboard. The thing is, I have a B650 motherboard which doesn't support SLI, and according to this comment, the only motherboard that will work with my CPU is this MSI Godlike X670 motherboard, so all I have to do is buy it. What the- I guess I'm just gonna have to enjoy having a single GPU for now. And you can enjoy this video next, where I overclocked an AliExpress GPU until I got 1000 FPS. 